Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. So today we got some pretty exciting news about what's going to happen with Coinbase and the IPO listing. I'm going to tell you exactly when that's going to happen and what could potentially happen with the crypto digital asset space. But I will just tell you this, don't hold your breath for a rocket ship. So on top of that, we're going to take a look at a new piece of information that Binance is now going to be listing stocks. And the first one they will be doing is Tesla. So again, it's another example of Binance taking the lead. And then two stories I wanna cover real quick, and that is that uh, there's been a drastic reduction in the spam count in our comments section. I'm gonna tell you exactly what that is. And if you are a YouTuber, just contact me so I can tell you so we can wipe out these spammers. And finally, there's some good information about what is gonna happen as far as the deadline for taxes for America. And this little piece of information just came out and said, hey, you might owe some taxes right now on April 15th. So we'll take a look at what's going on in those two or four articles, but first take a look what's going on in the market. So today it is the 12th of April. It is 10.30 a.m. El Paso, Texas time. And we are doing great in our market cap as far as being over $2 trillion. So $2 trillion, the hottest uh, assets right now on Twitter are Binance Coin, ARR, I don't know what that is, Solana, KCX, KCS, DAI, HTX, HV, and FTT, RFTX token. So just so you know, this is Trade the Chain. You can find a link in the description below. It's all about sentiment analysis and what is actually happening with the market as far as news stories. So just real quick, let me blow this up so you can see what I'm talking about. So Bitcoin, uh, everything's pretty much up for the day. And Binance Coin is a big winner uh, over the last 24 hours, up 17% probably because what's going on with that listing with as far as like listing stocks and um yeah they really did a great thing so that's pretty good he's down a little bit bitcoin's up a little bit xrp's still i mean 81 percent for the week watch out it's pretty good tether nobody cares cardano is up a little bit polka dot uniswap wow uniswap 21 percent. that's pretty good usually because that uh, version three is uh, coming out or is out so yeah a lot of great things that are, that are happening but just look at binance coin and when you're sitting at home looking at what to invest in take a look at what is actually has a utility right now not what it says it's going to do but what it's doing right now binance coin is really doing those things uh bitcoin is uh, a store of value i think we can all agree there uh, ethereum you can build a lot of things on ethereum and uh, of course it's great for the swap not great for the price but hopefully they figure that out and binance coin and that's why you got one two and three so that's how i see it anyhow let's jump into uh today's top story but real quick let me do the projected range real quick and see if you're a trader out there look at trade the chain because the next hour this is with 90 percent assurance you got a five it's going to go up five percent uh what is this rari governance coin i don't know what that is haven protocol stacks red coin binance coin beam trust swap like sushi all these things that i really don't deal with so if you're a trader uh, just check out trade the chain link in the description 14 day trial all that good stuff all right so let's jump into today's top story so the Coinbase IPO, everybody's talking about it. It's going to be great. Uh, they think that uh, on that day, everything will blow up, slow down. It doesn't usually work like that. Um, just because you have an IPO, people who are in this IPO or you know, who got early access, sure, they're going to make a boatload of money. And the people, once it gets listed and they can, they can buy it, yeah, I mean, it could go, IPOs, it could go to the moon. It could, it could just be stagnant. Uh, it probably goes up a little bit, but you know, it'll fluctuate. And that's great for like traditional people who are like in the, in the stock market. Maybe you yourself will get into it. I don't think I'm going to buy Coinbase stock. I just, I mean, it'll probably do great. I just, uh, doesn't really do much for me. I think I'll put into something else that will appreciate a little faster. Again, it could appreciate tons. I don't know. But, uh, Remember that this really, to me, what it means to me is like a stamp of approval. Like, hey, here's your here's your exchange and uh, it's all cryptocurrency assets. And this will kind of just lead all these people who are like naysayers, not just naysayers, but people like, I don't really know about this stuff. Just to go, you know what? There's a publicly traded company besides Voyager, uh, which is an exchange, Voyager is a brokerage, that... Uh, is actually been listed and it has a high valuation and a lot of smart money is getting into it. Maybe I should look into that. Maybe it's not just for drug smugglers and all that stuff that they talked to me about. Anyhow, so just so you know, this will happen April 14th in two days, two days. Wow. And again, 
the big thing is traditional finance. When when they see this happening, I think a lot of money is going to just start to dump into cryptos and digital assets. But this is just the IPO. Once this goes through, I think potentially an ETF can actually go go actually happen. I'm going to tell you exactly why and some other pitfalls. So just so you know, Coinbase itself has 56 million verified users. That's verified users overall. Monthly users, it's like 6 million. And we, we uh, covered this in a story about a couple of weeks ago. And yeah, so 6 million monthly users, that's pretty great. 36 million verified users, that's fantastic. But they've been around for a long time, so I could see that actually happening. And uh, they talked about how the value could be anywhere from $50 billion to $100 billion for Coinbase. Wow. Brian Armstrong is going to make a lot of money. By contrast, just to give a comparison, Intercontinental Exchange or ICE, which runs a New York Stock Exchange, has a market cap of $65 billion. NASDAQ has a market cap of $25 billion. And here comes little old Coinbase. Hey, we're at $100 billion. Sorry, new kid on the block. And that's how it goes. That kind of valuation is getting the investment community, particularly the exchange traded fund or ETF community, very excited. So first of all, uh, a couple of things. And that is that um, I think if we take a look at this is just what everything is compared to the world's money and markets and what it all is. If you scroll down, and I'll link this in the, in the comment section or in the description. So stock markets, you got $89.5 trillion that is just kind of sloshing around there. And then money and global real estate at 270, how much is it? 280 trillion. Wealth is a ton. And then derivatives, you know, futures and that type of thing, like almost a quadrillion or at least 500 trillion. So when we talk about this, these traditional money players, this is where all the money's at. This is where it all is. And this is where we have to extract that money from them doing goofy things, not financial advice, that they can get into our market. And so when we talk about like our cap of $2 trillion, remember one year ago, we were at like $200 billion during March of 2020. And now, I mean, that just sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? Two, I mean, $2 trillion, you're like, eh, that's how it should be. So if we take a look at all the money that's sloshing around out there, a lot of different factors, I think that these types of things are good stories to bring people out. I don't care who gets into it. I just want people into it so they can actually bring all these funds in there. Now, if they want to keep playing in those markets and do Forex trading and all that crazy stuff where they get a 0.05% per day, have fun. But uh, it sounds awful to me. So again, I think it's going to be great. And this is all about uh, really transitioning from the IPO to the ETF market. So uh, this talks about other tech ETFs, particularly Kathy Wood's ARK FinTech Innovation, as well as Global X FinTech ETF. Finex will also be likely buyers. And that's just the beginning. We will see many more ETF firms filing for crypto type funds. So there's two things. ETF type, I mean, ETF type funds or hedge funds, sure, they can get into it and they can put it in a basket, or whatever else. But if we take a black like an ETF, like a traditional ETF, that's going to be hopefully coming through this year. I've talked about this in the channel. I don't, I never really thought it could actually happen, but with things that are going on and the institutions really getting into it, then you got Ginsler, who's going to be uh, hopefully confirmed very soon, who taught blockchain and cryptocurrency at MIT. I think this could be, uh, you know, it could actually happen, which would be fantastic. And then to me, I'm like, who cares about an ETF, right? Because I always make the mistake of everybody's like me, I'm like, well, everybody just go down, just go down to Voyager or go down to Gemini or go down to Coinbase and just pick yourself up some Bitcoin. You know, you don't have to be an accredited investor. Just put 25 bucks in dollar cost average. What's the problem? I didn't really get it until I talked to a couple of friends, Alex Mascioli and Ryan Gorman over at Trade the Chain. And I listened to also an article or it was, um, I think it was Pompliano's podcast. And he had Kevin O'Leary from uh, Shark Tank. And he was talking about how like, look, you don't understand it. If I could just have an ETF and then I could roll my, you know, millions of dollars in there, I'm not everything, right? But, you know, a couple, just a paltry couple of million dollars and I could put that into an ETF, that'd be great because he was like, it doesn't make any sense for me to go to an exchange where I don't, it doesn't really physically exist. And then I have to like, you know, just, you know, they're going to custody it maybe, or I'm going to put it on like a, a, a little device like this. This is going to be a couple million dollars. You out of your mind. And we're like, yeah, that's exactly how it is. So for him and the rest of the people like him, that doesn't compute. They need an old style ETF 
So where someone else can just do all the work for them, they just dump money in and go, make me some more money. And that's what rich people do. Here's a bunch of money, make me more money. And an ETF is what they're used to. So let's just give them what they're used to. It's just like every other business out there. You have a customer, this customer wants this thing, you give them that thing and they do the thing that you want to do. It's so simple. I don't see why, I don't see why businesses just don't do that. So with this ETF, again, like the little graph we just took, took a look at, there's a lot of money sloshing around there. And if we can just get an ETF, then a lot of more people will be like, all right, I'll get into it. Now, the smarter ones, the earlier adapters, they're already here. But I think there's a lot of people on the sidelines just waiting. That's how I see it. Anyhow, so that was the, the good part, right? Here's a couple, couple things that I think you should know. First of all, ETF solves a lot of problems we just talked about. It's like a stamp of approval, all we talked about too. This was interesting. The gold, the gold ETF changed the world when it came out in 2004. It made it easy to own gold as an asset class. And I was like, really? It, couldn't you just pick up some gold bullion at like Circle K or something like that? Apparently not. Apparently it was very tough. And uh, 2004, I'm like, well, what did that ETF do for gold? Interesting enough, uh, here's a nice little uh, chart of like 30 years. So really 1972, 40 years, I guess. Wow, I'm getting old. And then, uh, you know, here, you know, Nixon took us off the gold standard and kind of went up. People could get it. And then in 2004, right around here, I don't know, around... Let's see, Jan, around here, May 12, 2004, somewhere around there, right? This is when that ETF was launched. I don't know the exact date, but if you take a look at 2004, look at 2005, and six, and seven, and eight, and nine, 10, 11, 12, then there's a drop off, and then here we are back again. So again, ETF really did do that, you know, and I'm sure gold bugs were like, what's the problem? You can just go down to wherever and get yourself a gold bullion. I don't see the problem. And it's the same thing with me. I'm like, what's the problem? Just go down to you know your local exchange, sign up. It's online. Use your phone and put it in there. People aren't used to that. Give them an ETF. That's it. So I will say this though. God, those gold bugs. I own gold and silver, just so you know. But when I see stuff like this, I'm like, wow. Went up from $1,500 in 2012 almost to 2000 in 2020. What a huge deal, right? Anyhow, um, I'm not going to get rich off gold, just a hedge. And I hate the people who are always talk about like, you got to own gold because, you know, economic collapse right on the corner and uh, Mad Max, Thunderdome and e EMPs. Sure. Anyhow, I own gold, but get real. So going on several weeks ago, and this is, this is kind of like the negative part of it, right? So we want an ETF. The IPO is going to do well. Several weeks ago, the SEC acknowledged the receipt of VanEck Bitcoin ETF application, which set in motion a 45-day regulatory review period. Great. At the end of the period, the SEC must approve, deny, or punt, or like just go it out uh, for another 240 days. And then uh, what most people believe is that even though it's you know, you've got Fidelity, and they're trying to get their ETF. Uh, you got Van Eck, which were big traditional players in gold, and now they're into Bitcoin. They're just going to punt it down the road, and 240 days, then they'll just probably, they might deny, they might approve. Hopefully they approve. Again, we got Gensler in there, so who knows. But um, the thing is, we've been waiting this for a long time, and I remember there's been videos about this before, and it never happens, but I think we're close, and here's a couple reasons why. A few years ago, there was no regulated futures market. Now there is, and the volumes are pretty darn high. There was also no regulated custodians with insurance. I think that's big because the SEC's job is to make sure that people are protected. I don't know, whatever you want to say to that. Um, and now there is custodians with insurance. So again, I think we're on the right track. Maybe this actually happens. And if it does actually happen, I know some people think it's not going to be a big deal. I kind of think it will because of what we just talked about with all this trillions of dollars just sloshing around and it could be enormous. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comments section. But lastly, I will just say this. If you think everything's going to happen on April 14th when the IPO comes about, and everyone's like, give me Bitcoin and give me Cardano and give me Tron and give me well, Tomato Coin, it's not going to happen. It's just like marketing. You got to see it a lot of times before you actually buy it. But this gives us legitimacy. And that's why I think that 2021, towards the end of the year, we're going to see fireworks. Let me understand the comment section. Let's move on to our next piece. Ah, real quick.
Binance is pretty awesome. Let's be honest. I wish I could have gotten in a, in a Binance coin. Uh, I'm in America. can't do it. You got Binance US. I'm in Texas. You can't do that either. So, I mean, there, maybe it's changed. I'm not for sure. But uh, I remember when I tried to get Binance US, like, sorry, Texan, you're not going nowhere, which is why I'm probably going to move to Puerto Rico. Anyhow, so this was something that uh, Voyager was talking about doing, about uh, you know going crypto to stocks. And I thought it was fantastic. And then all of a sudden I see this, I'm like, damn, they, ra they lapped them already. So Binance is going to offer up digital tokens that represent fully backed shares of equity stock. And they're going to do Tesla to start it off. And to me, like, I know there's, there's slight differences in, uh, in you know, actually owning the stock and then the digital tokens of the stock. But uh, if, you're trying to, if you're trying to make money, I don't see the, the, the big thing, right? So, of course, people in the comments will tell me what a moron I am and that I, this is, doesn't really make sense. But to me, if you're going from crypto and you can own a Tesla stock or you can own an Airbnb stock or a Mara stock or a Riot stock and you don't want to deal with, uh, you know, what was it, Robin Hood and all the shenanigans that they do, sure, why not? Let's make some money. So I think it's it's pretty good. So again, if you're looking at what your token does, take a look at what it does right now. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on to our last two pieces.